Hi there, welcome to Mr. Hall Maths. <clears throat> um, there's been some confusion about this uh, sweet problem on the Excel, at Excel paper. Um, Hannah and a bag of sweets and a probability. So I thought I'd just go through it and uh, explain where, why it was such a difficult question for the higher GCSE paper. So there's, she says there's N sweets in a bag and uh, there's six orange ones and you've got to prove this, knowing that the probability to get an uh, to pick two oranges is a third. Um, so what we've got to realise is it's conditional probability. She's taking the sweet out of the bag and she's not replacing it. So that's the first thing we've got to think about, which is quite difficult. If we think about the probability of her getting one orange sweet out of the bag, well that's going to be the six and there's n in total. So it's always the probability of something happening is always the amount of something divided by the total n. And then from there, when you are doing two events, you times the two probabilities together. So we're thinking, well, what's the second event? Well, we've got um, the probability now that she's going to get the next orange sweet. Well, she's already taken one out, so there's five left. And there's one less in total. To represent that in algebra, it's n take away 1. So there's one less. And we're told that that equals a third. The probability of that happening equals one third. So that in itself is very difficult. Now we've got to simplify fractions which include algebra. That is another very difficult skill. When you are multiplying fractions... <clears throat> You times the top by the top, the numerator by the numerator, and the denominator by the denominator. So we end up there with 30, and then n brackets n minus 1. So I've just put them together, I've not expanded them just yet. And that equals 1 third. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to move the entirety of the denominator to the numerator on the other side by times in both sides by this. <clears throat> I'm going to do that up here. So I end up with 30 equals n brackets n minus 1 over 3. And again, we're, we're, we're rearranging formula here, so there's another skill involved. Uh, I'm going to move the 3 up here to 30 times in that. So I end up with 90 equals, now at the same time here, I've moved that up there and I'm going to expand this bracket. So n times n, n squared, n times negative 1, negative n, and you can see that we're getting quite close to this now. If I move the 90 to the other side, so I take 90 from both sides, I get 0 equals n squared minus n, now take away the 90, and all I say all I've got to do, I mean we have done a lot of stuff, but all I've got to do now, put the negative 0 from that side to that side, so I end up with n squared minus n minus 90 equals 0. Very difficult. So you can see we've got, we've got understanding conditional probability, we've got multiplying using algebra, we've got multiplying fractions, we've got multiplying fractions including algebra, we've got rearranging formula, which includes fractions. Um, to solve it, n squared minus n minus 90 is 0. That's factorising a quadratic. Because it's on the non-calculator paper, odds are it's going to be one where it's two brackets. We always use the value there. Commonly it's seen with an x. This one is an n. And we need two numbers that multiply together to make negative 90, but add together to make negative 1. You can't see it, but it's negative 1 in theory. Those two numbers are 10 and 9. So 10 and 9 is 90. Can I use those numbers to get negative 1? Yes, I can. Negative 10, add 9. That's going to give me... Um, negative 1. But we've not finished yet. The answers are not negative 10 and positive 9 because we need it to be equal to 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So if I can make this bracket equal 0 by putting a number in there, it doesn't matter what's in there. So this n could be 10 because 10 take away 10 is 0. doesn't matter what's in there because 0 times anything. So for this case, n is 10. Or n is negative 9. So these are the numbers that you could get. But again, 
you're taught, with, well, we're, I teach and we're taught that the two values are correct. However, this is a real life example of sweets in a bag. A lot of people are saying, what's the sweets got to do with anything? This is the point where the bit about the sweets become relevant because it asks for the total of sweets in the bag. Well, you can't have negative nine sweets in a bag. So the answer that they were looking for would have been n equals 10. So a very difficult question. It's caused a lot of commotion on uh, social media. Um, I used to not like it when a teacher would just explain it, but hopefully I've explained it in a way that you can understand a little bit and uh, it, it probably won't help your frustration, but at least now there's been a bit of a walkthrough. So I've been Mr. Holmes. Peace.